Hi folks, in this very short video, I'm going to give a few examples of some really high profile cross site request forgery vulnerabilities that have existed in real systems, just to give you a flavor of you know how serious this problem can be, and also how easy it is to make mistakes. So the first one example that I'll give is ING Direct, which is obviously like a major financial institution. And they had a cross-site request forgery vulnerability on their internet banking website, which essentially meant that the attackers could do anything. So an attacker could um, basically the, the, there's this nice um, paper that described from um, from Berkeley um, cross-site request forgeries, and they give some examples of cross-site request forgeries that they found in the wild includes a vulnerability in New York Times where you could um, leak people's email addresses and there's I ING Direct and um, so we discovered cross-site request vulnerabilities in ING's site that allowed an attacker to open additional accounts on behalf of a user and transfer funds from a user's account to the attacker's account um, and since ING did not explicitly protect against cross-site request forgery attacks Transferring funds from a user's accounts was as simple as mimicking the steps a user would take when transferring funds. These steps consisted of, consisted of the following actions. And you can see here these different guest, get and post requests. Uh, and so an attacker basically just needs to, um, you know, get the victim to visit a website, which will then um, script from some JavaScript the sending of these requests along to the server. And next thing you know, you've transferred your money. Um, you know, from the victim to the attacker. Uh, Facebook had a cross-site um, request forgery vulnerability, or, you know, one of many probably, um, but the, this was from a bug bounty. Um, so there was there was a page on Facebook that didn't correctly check the tokens, so they, they were using a defense against cross-site request forgery, which we'll talk about in the next video, uh, but they weren't actually checking those tokens were correct. Um, and so then they could um, basically send through other requests through to the Facebook's um, like API. From that one one mistake, they could basically access all of Facebook um, or a, a bunch of different functionality on Facebook. Um, so they could bypass the the protections against cross-site request forgery and um, you know control um, you know people's um, uh, interactions with Facebook. Uh, and there was an example in PayPal um, where you could update someone's profile picture because they didn't check their tokens. Um, you know, it's as simple as that. Um, they received a bug bounty for finding that. Um, Netflix had a cross site request forgery vulnerability so that you could alter the login credentials to compromise accounts. YouTube had a cross-site request forgery vulnerability that could enable almost any action on YouTube. Um, and so you can see that there are, um, you know, there have been lots of different cross-site request forgery vulnerabilities on even the most prominent websites, including, you know, internet banking and things. So, um, you know, you need to be really careful to make sure that you actually do put in protections against this, because if you don't do anything specifically to stop this, then your website you know, will be vulnerable to attackers, um, you know, making changes on behalf, you know, sending requests on behalf of victim users without them knowing about it. 